Hi again, and welcome back to our Channel Automation Podcast. I am your host, Casey Rias, and I'm joined here today by Big Sun and our special guest, Christian Haynes, who is here uh, as the CEO of MailCon and the Chief Events Officer of Finexa. Welcome, Kristen. Glad to have you. Um, to get started, I would like it if you'd tell us a little bit about MailCon. Um, it's going to be an event in Las Vegas coming out shortly. And it's going to have a sub-event with panels called Pitch Fest. So tell us a little bit about that. Thank you so much for having me, Casey and Vic. Uh, like you said, we do have an event coming up in Las Vegas on April 17th through 19th at the Caesars Forum. We have a lineup of over 50 speakers from various companies. Channel Automation will also be hosting a very exciting debate. Uh, we also have a Pitch Fest that uh, has 10 companies presenting startups in email marketing and marketing automation, as well as established companies. There will be some investors in the audience uh, from Google, Ocean View Capital, and some other companies as well. Um, it's going to be a great event. We're really looking forward to it. There's a lot of uh, activities happening. Yeah, we are super, super pumped for it. Um, and if you didn't notice there, we got the name drop. Uh, we are going to be uh, speaking at a panel and we're super, super excited to be involved in MailCon. Uh, definitely one of the biggest events on the West Coast of the United States of the year. And um, tell us a little bit more, if you can, about um, some of the events that are going to be going on on the side, like um, opportunities to mingle, right? I, I heard that there's going to be some uh, some uh, opportunities that are going to be outside of the main panel events and the convention floor where you could talk to people, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you don't have to have an exhibit booth to connect with attendees. MailCon, what we try to do is make our events about building relationships with people. So we have a game lounge that has life-size beer pong and has ping pong. Um, cornhole, and then we also have a welcome reception at Top Golf, so people can really engage with one another and have some fun together. The after party is at Brooklyn Bowl, uh, which is basically a nightclub slash bowling alley. Um, it's a really unique venue, and the whole idea is to get people to uh, have a good time with one another and really build relationships. We try to format the event so it's not like you just walk up to a booth grab a business card, and that's the end of the engagement. You're spending time, quality time with people the entire time and building memorable experiences um, together so that that way you can actually, you know, have something to uh, build off of other than just, hey, I met you at this show. How did you, um, how did you end up, you know, building, you know, coming up with MailCon? It's coming up with the agenda and what we do. No, um, just it's the, a like the history or like how you... How you started it? So MailCon, we actually acquired MailCon. Um, it was established as a uh, deliverability conference. So it was primarily uh, for affiliate marketers, and we acquired it in 2019. Uh, Finexa did. And our goal in acquiring it was to build a community around uh, the email marketing industry and also expand into on other tracks, which is what we've been working towards and are going to be, um, you know, working more towards into 2024. Um, the conference is primarily very focused around email marketing still, um, but the uh, the goal is to build a community and be able to provide people with the latest information, the latest strategies, the latest technology um, in email and marketing, omni-channel marketing. How long has MailCon been around? MailCon was founded in 2017. Uh, the inaugural event happened in New York City, and then Finexa acquired it in 2018. Uh, we've hosted, this will be our ninth conference. Uh, we did manage to do some events, thankfully, through COVID, uh, which actually turned out to be very successful. So we're still, in a way, just getting started because of uh, the pandemic. And since, you know, the pandemic and, and just through the years, what have you seen with you know, lots of people will say, well, email, you know, how, you know, maybe not as relevant anymore. I still feel that email is not going to go anywhere. But um, what is make, what, what makes email so special in, in terms of, you know, communication, marketing, sales, all of that, you know, uh, good stuff? So I agree with you. I don't think email is going anywhere. Um, I mean, it's it's a very powerful tool, especially for it when it comes to product and uh, retail sales like e-commerce. E um, 
I would say with the advancements that we've seen in interactive email, if anything, email is going to make, uh, I, I don't know if I would call it a comeback, but I think we're going to see that it even more so utilized across different verticals than in a, in a more creative way than it has been. And now we have the technology to actually check out and customize um, shoppers experience inside of an email, um, which can be used across several different industries from home services to insurance. That technology really hasn't, it's just starting to be adopted. And I think as we see that uh, interactive and gamified emails being adopted more, we're going to see email marketing just to uh, just continue to be um, a powerhouse in terms of, you know, high converting uh, a high converting uh, campaign strategy. You channel. talked about gamifying, um, and this is this is a term that we've also been using a lot in channel automation, like gamifying the experience of emails and text messaging. Um, what is that to like kind of the general public uh, mean? Like, how is it that you're making uh, using that gamification to make something more compelling when you're talking to potential? prospects or clients? Do you have any ideas or advice you can give people on that? Imagine somebody's excited to get your email because they're excited to see what is it that I can actually do inside this email. And there's some really interesting presentations that are coming up at MailCon on interactive and gamified emails. An example that one of the presenters will be showcasing is customizing your own Tesla within an email. So you can change the color, you can change the wheels, you can customize your own Nike shoes within an email as well as another example. So giving customers the opportunity to actually interact and uh, play around with the email with act without actually being redirected to a landing page, one that increases your, uh, your engagement and your click through significantly, but it also increases conversion significantly too, because we also have, there's also the technology now, um, which Several companies haven't adopted yet, um, but to be able to check out inside of an email without being redirected to a landing page. So, for example, abandoned cart emails, you can um, you can get an abandoned cart email and actually finish your checkout within the actual email. So I think in terms of, you know, how it will just make it better for everyone is customers, if you have a gamified email or uh, an email that you can actually interact with and it'll make customers excited to see. People love new technology. They love to be able to play around with things and they'll be excited to see what's next. Like, what am I gonna be getting? What can I build? What can I do within this email? And there's some really creative examples that um, will be showcased in the interactive email and gamification workshop that we're hosting at MailCon um, that some uh, companies have used um, and companies are developing for their clients to really engage and build a relationship with the brand and, and uh, interact with the products digitally. That sounds fantastic. And I, that's cool that you're having also like that gamification, gamification workshop. I actually didn't know that that was going on on the event. And um, by the way, um, since we also have Vic here and he's going to be speaking on a panel, what's some of the stuff that you're going to be covering as well uh, during your talk? We're going to be having... Um you know, a, a debate about what channel, you know, is the best for lead conversion. And really, we're going to be running the gamut, you know, around email, of course, text messaging, and voice as well as social. But, you know, really, it's it's a really fun way, you know, to to debate, to deliberate, you know, to to discuss, and, and to, to pick up the pros and the cons from every channel. And so we're hoping that, you know, we can we can bring that energy as well as uh, we're going to have uh, Lisa Jones from iMail. Uh, she works with lots of really, you know, large companies with her, you know, really cool email technology from Porsche to Delta Airlines. And we're also going to have Teddy Liao of NextRap, who's worked with large companies like Grubhub, Five9. Um, and so we're, we're, we're looking at, you know, powerhouses. And we're hoping to just really, you know, figure out a way um, to engage the audience, to let them start thinking for themselves and bringing the full spectrum, right? Because most of the time when, you know, at least for me, uh, sometimes I feel, not all the time, but sometimes I feel the keynotes that's kind of like one-sided, you're like kind of being uh, engaged in one specific way in one direction. With a debate, you're going to go and, and have the full gamut and you're gonna go and kind of, you know, debate, you know, each side and, and the pros and the cons. Um, I wanna throw it back to, to, to Kristen. 
you know, with MailCon, what's um, what are what are people going to miss if they don't attend events like these? Like because there are many industries. Lauren, out there, I like, was going to yeah. ask that. You beat me. <laughs> <laughs> I beat you too. But you know what? What are there's a lot of companies in home services, you know, manufacturing, solar um, industries that we're quite familiar with, uh, even with with medical um, and insurance. What are they going to be missing if they don't attend or they don't participate in events like these? Particularly with MailCon, getting insight into what you can do with email. And I think a, a lot of times, you know, people aren't even aware of some of the new technologies that exist or the developments that, um, you know, inbox providers like Google and Yahoo uh, ha or Verizon Media have taken to support this new technology. But I also think that they'll be missing out on the relationship building. There are so many uh, executives and CEOs and founders of companies that are are making bounds in email marketing and not just email marketing, omni-channel marketing. And uh, it's, it's so great to connect with them and, and learn from them and see how to improve their, their marketing strategies and performance. I totally agree. When the last couple of events that we went to, it was like the, the networking that you got to do was definitely the highlight. I mean, obviously going to the booth to booth and like seeing the events and seeing the panels was very, very cool. But you expected to see that the networking was always sort of a surprise, which was really fun. So if these guys uh, that are interested in MailCon or interested in other events that you have coming up, just can't attend they really like it sounds really good to them but they just don't have any options to attend what can they do is there any kind of footage that they'd be able to watch um is there any kind of like recaps just curiosity that's a great question so we do make all of our session slides available for download after the event uh, we also have a webinar series as well um, where we bring on some of the speakers that are have either are speaking at this conference or um, experts in the email marketing industry. Um, and we do a monthly webinar series that will be kicking off again in May. Um, we have a lineup all the way through uh, September. Um, in previous webinar series, we've covered topics like interactive email. We've covered um, deliverability. Uh, so there's all different types of email-related topics from beginner to advanced that we cover in those webinars. And those are accessible um, through our website, but also uh, through our uh, email subscriber list, you get invitations uh, to those uh, webinars. Yes. And if you're looking to access those websites so that way you can subscribe to the webinars, we're going to go ahead and put a link uh, to that in the description or in the comments, uh, depending on what platform that you're on, so that way you can access and sign up for those. Um, so besides that, um, also, uh, I mean, it sounds like it's going to be a really awesome event. Is there any point? Is there any going to be any events in 2023 that um, we should be looking forward to? That is like besides MailCon, it's like you you definitely should attend this one as well. It really depends on you know what your industry is. I would say in the email marketing space, um, aside from MailCon, Guru Conference is a virtual conference that. Um, has hundreds of speakers. I will also be speaking at that event. It's taking place in November. Um, it's like I mentioned, it is a virtual conference. It's completely free. Um, so that is a great email related event. Um, it, but in terms of uh, uh, other events, I would suggest um, for affiliate marketing, Affiliate World Barcelona is a great event. Calls Contact IO is a great event. LeedsCon is always a recommendation, but that one has passed. Um, and then if you're looking for more of creative marketing, uh, I always recommend Inbound by HubSpot. Um, that's such a great event to go to just for inspiration, uh, for brand inspiration. Um, and South by Southwest, of course, is a great event for for inspiration. When when you have a lot of people coming into, you know, conventions like MailCon and they're looking to increase, like you said, their marketing performance, um, what is what do you think are the obstacles that a lot of these companies are 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 coming up with and and how are they able to go and overcome that because i feel sometimes they they come to these events they like the technology but they don't really know how to use it or maybe their their thing is oh this is the silver bullet i'm looking for that but what do you think the obstacles are and what's the kind of mindset that they should have so that you know when they attend these events or when they look at the new technology they're able to deploy it in a, in, in a much more efficient and effective way? Yeah, that's a really great question. So 
I mean, it, we have a very diverse audience that attends MailCon. So I'll start from the affiliate marketing side of attendees where the biggest challenge is always deliverability. Um, there's a variety of deliverability consultants and deliverability tools uh, that are offered at MailCon. Um, attending those sessions, we have quite a few sessions that cover deliverability um, and then also quite a few tools that are being exhibited um, regarding deliverability as well. But actually taking the time to connect with those speakers after their sessions and, um, you know, dive deep into what the issues are that you're having. Uh, we did a, a, a session at MailCon in 2022, which was actually a hands-on deliverability workshop where we had marketers bring their email program to MailCon and work hands-on to fix and resolve some of the issues that they were having, or at least to learn how to do that. Um, on another spectrum, if it's a brand marketer or a product marketer who's coming to the event and they're looking how to improve their design, they're looking how to um, increase engagement. There's a variety of sessions that cover topics um, exactly on how to do that. And I would have the same recommendation, which is try to get try to connect with those speakers. They'll be at the event. They'll be in the networking activities. Uh, connect with the people that are creating the technology that are at the event. Most of MailCon's audience is director level and above. Um, so there's a lot of founders and CEOs that they can learn so much from um, while they're there. And we just try to create the opportunities where they can actually, you know, ha spend time with those people at those networking events in the exhibit hall after the speaking sessions. Um, but attending the sessions, going through the agenda before you attend, um, taking the time to try to connect with the speakers after their talks going to the exhibits if they have an exhibit, talking to them there, attending the networking events, branching out and and meeting the people that you're looking to meet. So in summary, I would say plan ahead of time, um, mark out, identify what your goal is, mark out who you want to meet, um, you know, find out are they exhibiting? Are they, uh, when is their speaking session? When's a good time that I can connect with this person and really make the most of your time there that way. I think um, but also taking the time to learn the products. If products that you use are showcased at the event, go to the exhibit booth, ask them questions. Um, I'm sure every company that's there would be more than happy to um, help out their customers um, if they're attending the event. Oh, yeah. That's what they that's what you get a booth for is they're eager to talk to you. Right. They're all lined up ready exactly. to go. Exactly. So one of the things that I did want to run by um in terms of like you, you mentioned uh, deliverability issues, and that you're you're going to be having support for that. And so, one of the things I wanted to ask, um, just because uh, it's been the the last couple of weeks have been crazy. If you've been keeping track of the TCPA compliance and deliverability, there's a lot of new laws and legislation being, uh, you know, up and up and coming for that. And so, Vic, um, one of the things that we've been researching is how to get that deliverability staying consistent with both emails and text messages. So what what can you uh, provide as advice for our listeners to get that high deliverability still? I think, well, number one, you've got you've to maintain a good clean list with, with the right opt-ins. Um, but then I think you, you've got to really think about how do people opt in into something, right? Um, you know, this problem of deliverability, you know, can't be solved downstream on the level it was created where you know, oh, we're just going to just keep on increasing different types of technology to bypass spam or to try to trick the consumer into being able to opt into this or to try to read this. I think the, the way to, to, to really solve this is to go upstream of the issue and to go and, and see that people want to opt in into things that they want to consume. In this case, good creative marketing, uh, creative materials, you know, engaging content. Um, lots of people, you know, look at this from a generalized level, which I think that's where, you know, businesses, when they scale, they come up against this particular obstacle because they're trying to generalize every single target's uh, audience funnel. And what they're doing now is they're going to say, well, look, I like this content and I think this is what people like. And so when they're doing that, they're really looking at it from, an, you know, the audience as a homo economicus as opposed to a homo sapien, a, a human being. And, and then they go and say, well, look, this is what I want to sell them. This is what I want to show them as opposed to thinking about like, what do audiences really want? 
Okay. And so they try to cram as much information into there. And I think this is the reason why a lot of the service providers have started to, you know, increase the securities as well as the ability of spam filters to really catch a lot of these things because consumers, you know, people have just started to go, I'm just bombarded with so much wasted stuff that I, you know, like, I don't even want this stuff, right? I don't want to be sold. I don't want this information. And I think that's really a simple thing, but it's, it's, it, it seems to, to go over the heads of a lot of marketers or a lot of companies. Um, but if they just look at it from the perspective of, look, I'm going to build content and I'm going to provide content that is helpful, educational, entertaining, right, and engaging to people, then you'll get better deliverability rates because people are going to want that information. You know, um, I know that when I go to my spam filter and then I look, once in a while I'll see the piece of, you know, um, a, an email that went to my spam and it's really interesting stuff. Guess what I do? I fish it out of it and I go, safe list. You know what I mean? Because I, I, I feel like, oh, I want more information. I don't know what's coming, but that piece of email that I saw that was engaging, interesting, funny, entertaining, you know, um, right. didn't feel like I was trying to be, I was being sold. That allowed me now to be now a fan or a subscriber or a follower. And so future emails are now going to get delivered to my mailbox. So I think if, if, if companies took that particular stance and they put a little bit more effort, you know, a lot more effort into the content, into the creative and focusing really on engaging people, making them laugh, entertaining them, you know, really attaching to the emotional side of things. Um, I think once you add the technology piece, then you're really winning and you're scaling. Uh, but before that, I think, you know, um, you've really got to look at it from the upstream perspective and not uh, just look at, okay, I got to try to bypass the technology or the security or the spam. I think that's a, one of the, the ways to miss. Hey, I mean, I I do have some tips where you can bypass it, but you know, I I won't I won't go over that on this podcast. I could go for a whole podcast talking about ways that you know channel automation is kind of going around uh, trying to make sure that things can be delivered properly. But yeah, I think yeah. that's absolutely right. Having creative content, I mean, not I don't think everybody's going through their spam. <laughs> This, this junk email and they're like i like that i think that you might be the only person on, on earth doing that but you know i appreciate that about you Kristen, do you have any comments on it i mean i go through my spam folder too so oh maybe I find it's just me. <laughs> you can have really great technology that bypasses spam and it gets delivered 100 percent of the time but if i see the email and it's crap you know what i mean it's like so much I see these emails where I look at it and it's just all HTML and, you know, it's like promo and there's so much information on it and I can't just delete that fast enough. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of people feel that way too, where they go, I'm not really in the mood for like buying, you know, this product or this particular service. And so, you know, junk, spam, delete, something like this. Um, and I think, again, it, the, the, the key here is to, for companies, I think, to really look at that and say, I've got to be patient. I can't just be sell, 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 and I want some immediate call to action. And I think if you build on that, it's just like saving in your bank account or investing. You know what I mean? You're going mm -hmm. to get the dividends later on, and it's evergreen. It's, you know, it's, a gift, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Um, but I think a lots, lots and lots of companies miss on that point and and then they really just want to focus on hey i just want everything to be delivered for people to be able to see it which is important but what they're seeing is just as important and when they're seeing it i think so i think those are the aspects that that get missed on and 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 i believe at mailcon you'll be able to get some of those those tips so so lots of people should come yeah absolutely you'll definitely um be able to hear a lot on deliverability but even to add what to what you were saying, Vic, deliverability is really, email is really about, and SMS is really about sending the right person the right message at the right time. And I think that with email specifically, giving people the option to update their delivery preferences, how often they want to hear from you, is very important to make sure that you're not losing subscribers just simply because you're sending them too much content. 
And giving a real life example is there are so many companies that I subscribe to their emails, but they just send me way too much emails that I end up unsubscribing because they don't have the option to update my preferences. I only want an email when it's like, send me a sale. Don't send me. I don't want to hear about your blog or something like that. So really getting to know your subscribers on a deeper level to understand what their needs are and sending them based off of their needs and nurturing that relationship based off of what they're telling you. But oftentimes companies don't even collect that information from subscribers um, and they don't even give them the option to update or customize their preferences. I have a question um, for, for Kristen, and this is just for, you know, our younger audiences because, you know, we're on YouTube, we're on TikTok. And for those, you know, maybe, you know, for Kristen, how did you get started? What is your advice to our younger audiences? Those that don't want to be just another TikTok influencer. Like how, <laughs> cause you see, like you, you seem like to be that younger person. How did you get started in this issue? What would your advice be to those people who want to be just like you one day, or at least to get into industries like yours and to be successful? Well, my journey has been um, very unique. I started off a nonprofit with the American Heart Association for eight years and um, then I moved into e-commerce, working in scent marketing, running a B2B and B2C online store, which has now become a multi-million dollar company. Uh, and then I moved to, I came back, that was in Canada. I came back to the U.S. and I started my own e-commerce consulting company, um, which only lasted a year before I was brought on full time to work for uh, Finexa when we acquired MailCon. So it's a really strange journey. It wasn't at all what I planned. Um, it just kind of fell into place. But I would say in order to be successful, I mean, work hard is a given. Um, you have to, of course, work hard, but you have to really believe in what you do and whatever you're doing, it, treat it like it's your own company. If you're working for somebody else, always treat it like it's your own company and you'll be successful. Um, and that would probably be my one piece of advice for people who are employed um, if you're looking to start your own company, uh, give it give it your all and don't give up and, and do whatever, you know, it takes to to get it done. But know, you know, when there is a time to quit, but push it until, you know, you're past, uh, you've given it everything that you've got. It definitely is very good advice to have sort of that future thinking plan and not just be trying to get through that day to day. I know that's very tempting for a lot of the people that are just starting out. Um, you know, you're so tired by the end of your work and you're like, gosh, dang, I'm like at the lowest of the totem pole. It's such a pain in the butt trying to do my tasks every day. But yeah, thinking of it like it's your own company and you're like, OK, well, if I was starting my own company, I need to build it from the ground up. And so I can yeah. see where there's issues here and there. And I want to bring that up to um, my boss and maybe they'll bring it up to their boss if that's a great idea. I think that's really, really good advice to start out to somebody young talking from somebody who's. Uh, you know, also kind of starting out as well. You know, I I, I guess I'm saying that uh, I, I forget that I've been around for a while. <laughs> I still have that yeah. like new new baby mentality, I guess. It's interesting what Kristen was saying there because lots of employees or people who, you know, who, who work for somebody or work for a company, you know, I would say the majority of people, they don't really take that ownership um, mindset. You know what I mean? Like they, it's like I clock in, I clock out. I'm done for today or, you know, it's not really my problem once I'm not there anymore. Or at least, you know, if I'm, I'm if I'm if I'm not on the clock, I'm not really thinking about those things. Um, but, you know, people who want to be owners or want to move up, they seem to all think that way. Like, OK, this is my domain. I own it. You know, I may not be the owner, but I will take that ownership mentality. Um, and, and I think that's that that's really great. And it's really great advice for especially the young people who are going to be starting out. Um, they, you know, they'll be starting out usually at the lower rungs of the, of the totem pole and, um, you know, kind of having that mindset really helps. Yeah. Thank you, Kristen. I think more specific to the email marketing industry, um, another piece of advice in general, like I think that applies, I think, you know, treating it like your own company applies to every single industry. Um, but specific to the email industry, what helped me be successful is getting involved in communities, um, women of email, uh, the email gate Slack channel. I went and I found every single email community, every single event, every single 
uh, a community that was relevant to our demographic. And I showed up, I went to the conferences, I engaged in the online chats, anything to build my network and build my knowledge in the industry. And I took the time to have conversations with people and ask them, how did you get here? Who should I know? Who, uh, what do I need to know to just, what can I absorb? Um, from these people. And really, I kind of put myself in like a sponge and found every single person that I could learn from um, as possible. And I still do that to this day. I mean, obviously, we're always growing. So I'm um, just connecting with people and do- digging and finding out, um, you know, who are the best resources to learn from and really taking the time and making the effort to uh, follow through with um, connecting with people and going to those events and engaging in the communities. Starting off networking young is so, so important. And I will say, especially like uh, when I was first attending these events, when I was like in past companies, just starting out, um, imposter syndrome is big. And I do want to address the younger people in the audience where, uh, yeah, you do feel like at first that you don't belong there. You're like, oh, crud, I've gotten myself in over my head right? Um, That is all within your mind, right? Um, So you just have to kind of fake it till you make it. I know that everybody says that, but it's true. Like uh, you are there for a reason. uh, And if people didn't want to hear from you and didn't want you there, you wouldn't be there. Like you, you don't get forced into those positions. Your company has faith enough in you to send you out to do speaking on behalf of the company to other people so they can see it in you. You just got to see it in yourself. That's going to be it for us today. Thank you so much to our listeners and thank you, Kristen, for attending. Of course, we're always excited to have uh, people coming back and listening to our humble conversion and lead gen based podcast. Regardless, if you liked or hated what we had to say today, we do want to hear back from you. And so shoot us your thoughts at hello at channelautomation.com. And subscribe to our podcast on Buzzsprout, YouTube, or other places where you're listening to this podcast right now. We'd also like if you would follow us on social media. And as always, have a great rest of your day and keep your conversion high.